the sun is shining, the birds are chirping, the bacon is sizzling. Welcome to the Daily Swole. Welcome, everyone, to episode 85 of The Daily Mother Swole, the Saturday Swole. On this wonderful weekend, which is a day like any other, like I always say, I want to talk about my favorite ab exercises, my favorite exercises for the abdominals. Now, this might be a multi-part series. I'm not sure how far we're going to get into it today, but I want to talk about a couple in particular of my personal Favorites for a couple of reasons, most effective movements, most effective, uh, the ones I usually get uh, sore from, you know, those, those are usually the ones that we all like, the ones that really feel the next couple of days. You try the lat raises? Nice. The, um, which ones? Like the, the sideline ones? This is great. This is a play. This is a, a continuation, this conversation from a episode, I think it was 80 and 81, the incline bench. Yeah. Uh, episode in Daily Swole, I think it's 80 and 81, the shoulder exercise I talked about, side lying raises. I have a couple live workouts out there um, that showed the side lying uh, shoulders, which is a great exercise. Anyway, moving for abdominals. Now, just so you guys know, the um, my private premium page is where all those private workouts are going to continue. So if you're interested, you can check out my website, solenormous.com for solenormous premium. Today, I'm going to be doing another leg workout with glutes. I'm going to be doing some, actually some leg press. I'm going to do some leg press today uh, just to bring my knee back into the game and still crush some glutes. So any of those exercises, rotator cuff, a lot of those movements, um, all those live workouts are going to be through uh, private scopes on my premium page for premium members. So you could check that out or ask me any questions, but you could also sign up on that through my website, solenormous.com. And I'm going to be doing some of these ab exercises I'm talking about now. That being said, a couple of my favorites are reverse crunches on a bench. Now you might remember some of those uh, rocky crunches. You'll see him in like Rocky four with his legs straight, kind of hanging off the bench. That's a variation of it. That's a more extreme variation that I can also do, but that's much more challenging. You don't necessarily have to do that. It doesn't have to be completely, wow, let me break my back. But a reverse crunch is great. It's a great core strengthening movement. Now remember, stabilization and strength are two different things. Stabilization is when you're trying to keep the body in a certain space, in a certain alignment, in an unstable environment. So the tiny little muscle on the inside are working to maintain the spine's integrity and position in space. So when you have that situation, that's a stabilization exercise. When you start doing strength, you start using spinal flexion. You start moving the spine, uh, flexing and extending, but in a very limited range of motion because the abs have a very limited range for um of movement, only probably a couple inches. So when you're doing a reverse crunch, you're doing a very short little hip lift and you're not doing a hip pop. You're not doing a hip pop, you're just pulling the hips up a little bit. So a reverse crunch is when you're lifting your hips off the bench, you're grabbing up over your head and you're lifting your hips up off the bench. I love the reverse crunch. The form is very, very important. And of course I can't show you in this actual moment but the form is essential. But a reverse crunch is one of the best ones you can do. Plank, of course. Love the plank. I also love the ab roller. I also love the ab roller, any kind of dynamic plank. What I mean by dynamic plank or dynamic iso is when you're doing movement with the body, but the core is maintaining its isometric hold. So an isometric contraction is when the muscle is contracting, but it's neither lengthening nor extending. So you're not doing a crunch. You're not doing a movement. You're not just sitting there holding a plank. You're actually rolling your hands out on one of those little ab wheels, which is actually... It looks like a piece of crap, little piece, you know, garbage piece of equipment, but it's really one of the better ab exercises that you can possibly do. Unless you have problems with your knees, you can't kneel. The ab roller is fantastic. It just brings to my attention. I need to order like a quality one online. Uh, it's such a great action. It's such a great, great tool uh, for the gym, and it's cheap and it's portable. Uh, every gym should have one of these, but they're more, they're so, 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 so commonly done incorrectly. So it's really a shame when I see people doing these wrong, but when done correctly, you're getting a dynamic, gradually increasing intensity of an isometric hold. So as you extend your arms and you push your hips forward in that rolling movement, you're getting more resistance and the abs are 
and the core muscles are resisting more and more as you extend further because your center of gravity travels further forward uh, towards your hands and away from your hips and it makes it more challenging as you roll out and it makes it a little bit more of like a dynamic uh, pull where the stress increases gradually as you roll further forward. So it's a great combination of a stabilizer and a movement and it really, when done properly, it teaches you a lot of muscular, a neuromuscular control with the core. So you have those two exercises, you have the reverse crunch and you have the ab roller. I'm also a big fan. Well, I did this yesterday in my private workout uh, on Periscope where I did kind of like a movement plan. It goes for triceps as an arm exercise, but it really nails the abs. I also like the hanging leg raises. I also like hanging leg raises, not so much when you prop your arms up and you're resting on your elbows, but the ones when you're actually hanging, when you're holding up overhead, when you're either using wraps or using like the, even like the ab straps where you're hanging your arms in there, those are okay. But I like really gripping. I like gripping and using grip strength and doing leg raises. Now, if you're going to do those, if you're going to do leg raises, here's what I want you to do. Anytime you do a leg raise, anytime you do any kind of abdominal exercise, you want to make sure you're holding for two seconds at the full contraction. You're moving slowly on the eccentric, but you're also holding for two se seconds at the full contraction. Here's why. So many times I see people doing leg raises, just going to go up, up, knees to chest, knees to chest, up, up. It's just momentum. It's just momentum. You're treating the muscles, the tendons, the ligaments, everything as an elastic band. The problem with that is there's no time under tension. If you want to think about you know, where the muscle is under tension the most, it's like a split second where the muscle is actually contracting hard. Think about it. You contract, 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 contract. Knees to chest, knees to chest, knees to chest, knees to chest. There's no time when the muscle is actually squeezing. If you come up to, if you do like 10 reps, a split second, you might get what, a total of like one second of full contraction. If you come up and do two seconds and hold one, two and slowly let it down and come up and hold one, two. Even if you do five reps, that's 10 seconds. That's 10 seconds of time under tension. That is why when someone tells you, oh, I do 500 crunches at night, they're not doing them correctly. If you do abs correctly, what up, Michael V? Welcome back, dude. I caught one of your uh, busts the other day. It was great. Um, if you're doing abs properly, you don't need to do 500. All you need to do is like maybe 5, 10, 15, quality, adding resistance, changing the angle, holding the muscle at full contraction because then you get that time under tension. And with 5 or 10 reps with a two-second hold, you're getting 10 to 20 seconds of full time under tension, whereas if you're just kind of bouncing up and down doing crunches really fast, you're getting that elastic effect, you're getting that recoil effect, and you might be getting only a second or two of full contraction. You're not getting really any full tension in the muscle. Do I have any clothes on? I do have shorts on. I do have, I do have shorts. That's a good question, Periscope. That's a good question. And to be honest, the only reason I have shorts on is in case there's like any like malfunction here and something, the camera falls and you could see my junk because, you know, what color is my junk? Black. <laughs> Joke. Blue pants. Who cares? Anyway, so time under tension is where it really comes into play. Time under tension is really important. Understand that's why when you let the weight down for a bicep curl or a slow descent, you want to magnify, you want to exaggerate the eccentric contraction. You want to really keep as much tension on the muscle through the, the entire span of the movement, the entire repetition. Thanks, man. I appreciate the input. Yeah, it's just think about the muscle shortening and lengthening. Remember, any muscle, any single muscle, it's stronger when it's lengthening. So if you're doing a curl, I just say curl because it's the easiest way for everyone to understand. You lift up against gravity, okay? You lift up against gravity. That's a concentric contraction. You're working against gravity. That's the weakest. That's the weakest range of motion. That's the weakest range of motion. If you are holding at the top, if you're holding the weight at the top, that's an isometric contraction. That's the second strongest. That's the second strongest contraction. The eccentric, the slow lengthening, the slow lengthening, going with gravity, resisting, decelerating the weight, decelerating the resistance. Thank you, Mike. I appreciate it, man. Thanks for the support. Decelerating the resistance with gravity is the strongest type of contraction. So when people curl up, they think that's the important part. They think that's the important part, going against gravity. They think lifting the weight 
When we think of like weight training, you don't think of it as like, hey, I'm going to decelerate weights. No, you're lifting weights. So people think of lifting as the important part, pulling the weight up against the, against the pull of the earth. It's going with gravity. It's going with, it's decelerating. That's the important part. Same thing with abs. When you lift your hips up for a reverse crunch, lowering slowly. When you lift your knees up for that hanging knee raise, lowering slowly. When you're going out for that rolling, for the ab roller, going out slowly, okay? It's not overcoming, it's deceleration. That's when you're getting sore. So when you're sore the next day from a workout, it's from that deceleration because the muscles are lengthening as they're trying to contract. There's tension while the muscle's lengthening and the fibers are pretty much like trying to grab onto each other as they're ripping apart. That's why it causes so much trauma and damage. And if you're overloading the eccentric contraction when the muscles are strongest, you break down the fibers the most, you create the most internal uh, trauma and micro trauma and micro tears, and you're going to stimulate the greatest response for growth and for size. That's how you get bigger. That's how you develop muscle when you can't lift more. If you're lifting five pounds and you want to lift 10, how can you possibly lift 10 just by lifting five more? You don't just like lift 10 pounds and be like, hey, I want to lift 20 pounds, so I'm going to keep on lifting 10. What, you think your body all of a sudden just like spawns like, hmm, I want to be bigger now, boop, and just pops up bigger muscles so now you can lift 20 pounds all of a sudden? You have to overload. That's why going to failure is important. That's why going past failure and that physiological feeling of failure is important. That's why when it burns and you push and you push, I do workouts. I'll do a whole another daily swole on counting once you start burning. Once you start feeling fatigue, starting to count. Don't count from the first rep. Count when you start burning. Count those reps past failure, those reps into the great beyond. Start counting that gray area. Start quantifying that gray area as the beginning. What, those reps that start occurring once you're already past that point of, ah, that's my adaptation. If you stop when you start getting tired, if you stop when it starts burning <laughs> into the beyond, yeah, like Buzz Lightyear, right? To infinity and beyond. If you start, stop, if you stop once it starts burning a lot, then you're, ne you're gonna, never going to adapt to anything more. You'll always burn, always fatigue, always be tired. Your body's not going to get bigger and start developing more. Your body's lazy. It doesn't want to change. Adaptation is not something your body wants to do. It's a challenge. Think about how easy it is to break things down. It's so easy just to like knock down a, you know, a house of cards rather than build it. It's harder to build these things. It's hard to develop. It's hard to you know, build one thing and stack things up. It's hard to create. Your body does not want to go out of its way to burn fat. Your body does not want to go out of its way to build muscle. It's just a fact. Your body does not want to do extra. Your body is lazy. You have to force it. You have to force the adaptation. You're forcing adaptation. You're forcing evolution. That's what you're doing. Adaptation. You're forcing a micro evolution in your body. You're forcing it. You're pushing it to the point where it has to change. It has to change for survival. That's what evolution is. Creatures change over time. Traits change. Characteristics change in order to survive to change in climates, uh, food sources, temperature, whatever. Your body, you're changing, you're forcing a micro adaptation so it gets bigger so it can withstand those resistances in the future. Okay? Micro evolution. Absolutely. No, I, I appreciate that. Micro evolution. So you're forcing your body to adapt. You put stress on the body repeatedly. That's why working out regular, that's why consistency is the most important thing. You can work out great once a week, but you need to do it every day, regularly. You expose your body to this kind of overload on a regular basis, it's going to have to adapt. It's going to have to evolve to be able to handle this because it doesn't want to get beat up. It doesn't want to rip apart. It doesn't want to be under stress. It doesn't want to be under duress. Your body wants to be comfortable. Your body wants to chill. So your body will get stronger. It'll get more developed. The fibers will get thicker. Uh, you will create more mitochondrial density for aerobic capacity. Your body will get better. Your body will get better. Exactly. The brain works that way too. You have to force adaptation. Think about when you study, you study, you start learning. I mean, you just, you do things. You, you just, you just get better at things. It's practice, but your body will evolve to be able to handle that overload. Your body will evolve to be able to handle that resistance, to be able to handle that stress. That way it doesn't stress it as much the next time, but guess what? Then you go back to the gym and you start stressing it more because now you can lift 20 pounds. So then you start doing 20, 25, 30 and negatives. That's why negatives are so important. That's why lifting heavier weights and just doing the negative portion only is really important. I've done a couple daily swells on negatives. I'm going to have to come back to that because I still think that point has to be coded over again and again in different ways because negatives, the eccentric, is super important. Oh, I appreciate the support, Mike. I really do. Thank you so much. 
I really like the interaction on Busker. I love this. I love that app. I love it. I really hope it keeps picking up. Thank you again. I appreciate the support again. Uh, if you're on Periscope, you haven't checked out Busker, just so you know, you should definitely check out the app. It's for, I don't think it's for Android yet, but um, still just for Apple. But Busker, it's a live streaming app. It's super cool. And if you didn't know that on Periscope, that I brought, I, that's why I'm talking to both things. Um, I stream on Busker and Periscope live every day at 12. So I'm always doing whenever I'm here. Android comes out on Monday. <gasps> oh, that's going to be huge. That's going to be huge. I'm going to be on my phone on that because I have an Android. Comes out Monday. Oh, dude, you just made my weekend. You just made my weekend. I'm going to be all over Busker. I'm going to be... I'm going to be doing live busks. I'm going to be doing live busks. Guys, if you want live workouts, you know, there was like live Periscope. I'm going to be doing um, Busker too. So if that comes out on Monday, you'll see some live, live, um, live workouts on Busker then. I'm going to be all over that. I'm going to be all over that. Got to be in early, right? So I'll say for a few minutes after on Periscope. And now I know I got towards negatives and I kind of, I wouldn't say I got really off track because it still applies, but make sure that you, when you're doing those ab exercises I explained, those are fantastic, but they're only fantastic if you take into account the eccentric, the negative, the descent. Make sure that you focus on the whole range of motion. You're not thinking about speed. You're holding the contraction at full contraction and you're eccentrically decelerating slowly. Okay, focus on that. Remember, if you are interested in the private workouts, all the insights on how I eat, what I eat, my personal journey, a little bit more insight like a diary for me, what I'm eating, what I'm doing, what I'm training, the details, the background, accountability. If you have goals, if you want to lose weight, if you are motivated, then check out Solnormous Premium. You could sign up. It's $4.99 a month. It's on my website, solnormous.com. And you'll be admitted into the private Facebook group where I'll post all my meals. I'll post my live workouts. You actually sign up and I'll give live um, private broadcast feeds for my workouts, for foam rolling uh, sessions. A lot of stuff I will privately broadcast on, um, on Periscope private for members exclusively. So if you're looking to lose weight, if you want some more program design, some personal training, uh, some more detail, check that out. The accountability meeting, remember, those of you that are on premium already, the accountability meeting next week's accountability meeting is on Monday at one o'clock after the Daily Swole. So stay tuned for that. Anything else, check me out on Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook, anywhere, any public uh, forum, and I am there. Thank you so much for joining me for episode 85 of The Daily Swole. It's the weekend, but it's no excuse not to get absolutely jacked and ripped. Okay, so good luck on those abs today. I'm going to crush some stuff myself, some glutes, and uh, yeah, Saturday hump day, Saturday pump day, a day like any other, right? I'll see you guys later. Thank you for joining. I will see you tomorrow at 12 noon Eastern time. Peace out. <laughs>